Whether it's the Bronx River here in New York or the Irrawaddy River half a world away, rivers provide valuable resources to wildlife. Here at the first meadow, we're looking for two deer species and an antelope species. And they've migrated to the other side of that hill. We'll be there in five to eight minutes. In the meantime, you're looking at India's national bird, the peafowl. Did you know only the males are called peacocks? The females are called peahens. They get together and make baby pea chicks. The males are the ones with those impressive back feathers that they display with their tail feathers during the mating season. Once they've mated, those feathers fall out. They'll grow new ones for next mating season. Then you can only tell a male from a female because the males have blue heads and the females have green. If you see a green-headed pea head, look close behind head? her. She's loud and followed by a parade of pea chicks. Oh. They've been hatching over the last two weeks and will continue for the next three weeks of the mating season. We'll catch up with the deer and antelope in five to eight minutes when we get to the other side of the meadow. In the meantime, these hunts tell an important story about the Barasinga deer, who numbered less than 100 not that long ago. extinct is no longer with us, like the dinosaur of the dodo bird. The animals in our next exhibit were completely extinct in nature and could only be found in captivity. We're talking about the Mongolian wild horse. Captive breeding of Mongolian wild horses <coughs> excuse me, began in 1901 with a herd of only 28 animals. The Bronx Zoo received our first herd in 1902 and we have maintained that herd ever since. We're happy to report that Mongolian wild horses are being reintroduced into the wilds of Mongolia and southern China from both North American and Asian zoos. As you can clearly see, or not see, we give our animals lots of room to roam. If you're not, we'll catch up with the horses at the top of the hill. We have seven and a half horses on display today, so keep your eyes peeled. There's a baby in the herd. Oh! He's only four and a half weeks old. There's a baby horsey. You have to see it. I don't know where it While is. we're waiting to catch up for the horses, here's some history on the Mongolian wild horse. Dates back over 20,000 years. Look at the horses! See the horses? They're very rare horses, baby. They're from Asia. From Asia. Only very few horses. You see the horses? There's our baby right there next to Where's the baby? Where is to see the baby or not? Don't know. I don't think they've named him yet, actually. Oh, you see the well, there are genetic differences between wild horses and domestic baby? horses. There are physical differences as well. They're shorter and stockier in build. They've got an erect mane that's lacking the forelock, the piece of mane that falls between the eyes of a domestic horse. They're rocking the mohawk. They were born genetically awesome. Even though our professional researchers sometimes have difficulty spotting the animals they wish to study in the wild, both Noel and myself are able to pinpoint the animals for you today, even if they're not necessarily in plain sight. It's not difficult to do if you like to try. Just put yourself in their holes and figure out where you would go for a shady spot to rest or a little grazing time. In this next exhibit, we're looking for two endangered species, the brow antler deer and the gower. These large animals in front of you are the gower, the world's largest wild cattle. 